Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. Today is Monday, April 12th, and because it's a Monday, that means it's time for What Sold on eBay. Just like every week, we're going to take a walk through Instagram first. I'll show you our photos of our packages from the week, just to give you an idea of the volume that we're doing. Then we'll go on over to eBay. I have selected out some highlights of our sales from the week to show you some of our bread and butter items and brands that do really well for us consistently, as well as some bolo items and exciting sales. Just things for you to keep an eye out for when you're outsourcing. And of course, I have pulled up all of our plush friends that found their new forever homes in the last week. Uh, just like always, it's every single plush that's sold because they are my favorite thing to source, photograph, list, ship, package, talk about, and sell. So I always show all the plush. Let's jump right on in with what we're looking at here. This is today's shipping photo. You can see that we had 28 packages total. 25 of those were eBay sales, two were Poshmark, and one was Macari. Our historical sell-through rate, daily sell-through rate, is about 0.5%, which is typical for used clothing. Sometimes we fall a little bit below that because we have a lot of plush as well, and plush is more long tail, a little slower than clothing. But right around 0.5% is where we like to hang out and where we historically always have been. We have around 2,000 listings, give or take, probably right around 2,100. So we should be selling about 10 a day. So for Friday afternoon through shipping Monday morning, we should have around 30. So 28 is, is okay. I'll take it. That's pretty average. It's nothing stellar. It's nothing super exciting. It's not Q4. It's not like stimulus or tax return uh, time, but it's really good. So keep that in mind if you sell a lot of used clothing and or plush and you think your sales are low, 0.5%, um, even a little bit below that sell-through rate is typically pretty normal, even a little bit slower in times that folks just aren't shopping. Last Monday, we had 30 total packages, so we were right on the ball there. 27 of those were eBay and three were Poshmark. But you can also see where it is so important and why it is so important to branch out and cross post or list on other platforms. Those other platforms, even if they don't do the volume or the overall sales, the same as eBay, they can pick up that slack for you. You see here we had uh, three from other platforms. Last Monday, we had three from Poshmark. So it is important to cross post. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, guys. If you haven't tried List Perfectly yet, it is a great tool to use for cross posting. They have a bulk option where you can open up like 10 um, items all at once. Um, you can open up tabs for Macari and Poshmark all at once. You can uh, bulk cross post very quickly using their tool. I do have a video on this channel. It's about seven minutes long that shows you how to quickly list using list perfectly and their bulk tool. And then there is a promo code flipping hippos down in the description box is the link and the code you can use to try it for your first month for 30% off. It doesn't hurt to try it 30% off. If you don't like it, cancel it. But it is a good idea to cross post. Um, we had eight on Tuesday of last week. And those were all eBay sales, but we only had seven packages. Wednesday, we had 11. And Thursday, we had 10. Seven of those were eBay. One was Poshmark. And two were Macari. So you can, again, see the importance of cross-posting there. Um, this was from the week prior. So let's see what I'm missing from last week. Just real quick before we jump over to eBay. Let's see, we had Monday to... Did we see this one? Yeah, we did. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. 
I must have forgotten Friday, but on Friday we had around 10 or 11. Um, so we've been hanging out pretty good right around our 0.5%. Um, things are kind of kiltering out to normal. Sales were slow for a long time, um, whether it was due to COVID, shut down. The uh, time after Q4 is typically slow for all of us anyway. And then things picked way up when people were getting stimulus checks and tax returns. And it looks like things are coming back down, but kind of staying normal. Um, we haven't really seen a huge period of time of quote unquote normal since a year ago in last March when the shutdown began. Um, it's kind of been hit or miss. People were shopping during quarantine and then they weren't. Um, but that's just online sales. It's a roller coaster up and down. It's just important to keep active, keep listing. Um, active stores are a happy store. I always tell you guys that. So just keep active, keep listing, keep doing all the best practices. And the more items you have listed, of course, the more you'll sell. And then get those items cross-posted on other platforms so they can help pick up the slack a little bit when um, eBay's a little slow. Let's jump into the sales. We'll start with the plush. This is an Animal Pal by Kelly Toy. Kelly Toy has recently become a, a top favorite bread and butter brand of mine. I got a ton of Kelly Toys um, plush in some wholesale lots that I got. And I didn't realize before, I guess, I was surprised that they, they, they caught pretty high for bread and butter. Or, I mean, Kelly Toy is a pretty cheap company. Um... I thought, I thought it was a lot lower, but a lot of the uh, Kelly toys I got were comping at $15 to $20 and $25 sometimes. So I really like Kelly toy now. And I'm going to keep my eye out for them. They have different um, tags. Sometimes like this one is an animal pal. They have safari pals. They have farm animals. But you'll always see Kelly toy here on their touch tag. I have really begun to like Kelly toy. I also like elephants. Elephants tend to do really well for me. They sell quickly, usually. This particular one was 50 cents out of a wholesale lot. He sold for $14.99 and shipped first class. Next up, we have Disney Store Tangled Maximus. So this is from the Disney Store, which is um, really good to find. Disney Store, Disney Parks. Uh, those are all going to do a little bit better for you than any other um, toys by Disney or like if they're Hasbro or Mattel. This is from the movie Tangled. This is the horse Maximus. I believe he came out of a wholesale a lot and he was about a dollar. Um, he's a little older. He took a while to sell. He had some things going on with him. He had some loose brown threads on his neck where there were some rains. Um, he may have even come from Goodwill and been 50 cents. He very well might have, but I'm going to say he cost a dollar. He weighed a pound on his own, so he had calculated shipping on him. He did not comp as high as I had hoped, and he had damage. So um, he sold for $9.74, plus they paid shipping. The total all in, you guys can see the shipping there says $8, but it always shows me as if I'm shipping to myself in Pennsylvania. Um, his total cost was $20.37 all in, and we shipped him in a prior box, 12 by 12 by 8. You can order those for free at USPS.com. Next up, we have a Disney Winnie the Pooh piglet. Now, this one's by Mattel, so there you go, the Disney um, animals by Mattel, especially the oversaturated characters like Piglet here, and his touch tag is all kinds of damaged. Um, don't go for as much, but I got them for 50 cents, and I'll pick up any recognizable character for 50 cents every day, all day. I love bread and butter plush. I took a best offer on Piglet, 1079. He shipped first class. Next up, we have this Easter Bunny that came out of a wholesale lot. Cost was 50 cents. The um, bunny did not have a brand or any tags, so I just sold them as is and just used really good keywords. I've been talking a lot about this, I feel like, 
recently in what sold videos because I had a lot of plush that came in our wholesale lots that didn't have tags or didn't have brands. And that's fine. You can still sell them. You don't have to kill yourself looking for comps or animals that are the same. You really don't have to go through all that trouble. Um, just kind of find something similar. Um, make up a price if you feel confident enough. I do. I've been doing plush long enough. I feel confident enough. Um, and I just cram in as many good keywords as I can because even without a brand, stuff can sell. If it's cute, if you have good photos, he's an Easter bunny, um, he's a rabbit, put red eyes, spring, stuffed animal toy. So this bunny sold for $18.74 and shipped first class. Next up, we have a Thai classic. So some Thai is good, guys. The old retired small beanie babies, not so much. But the Thai classics, some of them can be very good. Um, there are some Thai attic treasures that are good. The beanie boos, the beanie buddies. Um, I just grab them all when I find them for a dollar or less when I bring them home. And sometimes I am pleasantly surprised, as I was with champagne. So if you guys find champagne... Um, she can go for more money if she has her hang tag. Um, there's a pink one that's a lot like champagne, and I forget her name now, but she looks exactly the same except she's pink instead of cream. She has a pink cat. She's pretty cute. I saw her when I was comping. So when I first got champagne, she was 50 cents at Goodwill, and I comped her and listed her for $44. Or $43.99. She's been around for a while. And I got a best offer uh, from a buyer for $20. And I went back with like $38. And they came up to $30. And so I recomped her. And I decided, because mine didn't have the hang tags, it's been around for so very long. And just based on what is currently listed and what has sold, I decided to take the best offer of $30. So $0.50 cents into $30 on this cat. It is a tie but it is a Thai classic, um, which is a little bit different than the other Beanie Babies. I mean, they're even a little bit bigger, as you can see. So um, she did ship first class, but because she was a $30 animal and um, a little more expensive and she had hard eyes, I did wrap the entire cat, not just her head or her eyes. I wrapped the whole cat in a big piece of bubble wrap real tight and nice and then in tissue paper and then into a poly bag. Next up we have a Coke seal. I picked this up for 50 cents just to bring it home and try it. The polar bears that have the Coke bottles that are small around the nine inch, eight inch size really aren't worth sourcing. They're kind of poop. They will comp. I've seen them at three and four and five bucks for a ship. I did find a seal and some other animals and decided to try them um, a couple years ago. This is pretty old. Uh, there was a, I want to say there was a panda bear, but that doesn't feel right. Maybe it was a penguin. And the seal, they were 50 cents each. And I thought, well, maybe they're a little more rare or less saturated than the polar bears. So I did get the seal for 50 cents. And um, now, nah, unfortunately, didn't comp that high. I took a best offer of eight dollars and 99 cents on the seal who also had just a little piece of bubble wrap put around it before it went in the bag because of the hard coke bottle but it did ship first class next up we have a wild republic cuddlekin spotted ray this came out of wholesale lot cost was about 50 cents uh Wild Republic is a good brand. They make a lot of animals that are harder to find or not as saturated, like a spotted ray. They make a lot of realistic looking animals. Um, and they uh, do pretty well. Sometimes they'll sit for a little bit, but they typically do really well for me. I like Wild Republic. Um, this was a more unique animal as well. This sold for $15.99 and it shipped first class. Next up, we have a Build-A-Bear. This is just a 13-inch bear with hearts all over it. So I did use uh, terms like Valentine's 
red and pink hearts, just good keywords there. And it sold for $19.99. So I know a lot of folks think that the plain Build-A-Bears aren't worth much or aren't worth picking up. And I've talked about this before too. Um, the Build-A-Bears that are plain, I start around 18 to, to 22, depending on the bear. This one, not so plain. So this one did sell for $19.99. I picked it up for 50 cents at the Goodwill and it shipped first class. Here we have a peep. This came out of a wholesale lot, so it was about 50 cents. Had a little bit of damage on its button there. Um, these small peeps I typically sell for around $12. They come in yellow, pink, I've seen blue ones, they're ducks. Sometimes they'll have Santa hats or Easter bunny ears or something cool. Um, and I usually get them, you know, if I can find them for 50 cents, I'll pick them up because they sell for about 12 bucks. One time I had a very large purple peep bunny and it was very, very tall. I can't remember. It was like a foot and a half and it weighed over a pound on its own. That one sold for some big money, like 20 or 25 bucks if I remember correctly, plus the shipping. So if you ever see the big peeps, grab them. Those are definitely a bolo. These smaller ones are kind of your lower end bread and butter. This one shipped first class. Next up, we have a Build-A-Bear outfit. I can never say it enough to you guys. Strip those bears and sell them naked and sell their outfits separately. Unless the bear is clearly like a themed bear who is meant to have an outfit on as part of the bear's um, character or a theme, I always strip them naked and sell them separately. You will absolutely make more money that way. The outfits can go for a lot of money. The outfits um, sell pretty quickly for me. Even the very, very most generic outfits or just a t-shirt, just a pair of shorts, I will start at like $12 um, and go up from there depending on the outfit. This one had khaki shorts, a shirt, a pair of underwear and a bow. I started at high, $23.99, and I did take a best offer of $17, which was fine um, because the bear is going to sell as well. So always strip them, sell the outfits separate, and don't sell yourself short. Look, this one even had damage, had a little bit of staining. Um, my typical rule for Build-A-Bears um, I don't start them below 18. So if I have a plain brown one or a plain black or whatever, um, I don't even really comp them anymore because a lot of folks want to sell those for like next to nothing for pennies. So my general rule is I don't start any build the bears themselves below 18. I will take best offers of 14 and 16 occasionally on the very small plain ones. And then the, the Build-A-Bear clothing, I won't start below $12. And that's for like, if I had that purple underwear right there by itself, I would have literally listed that by, by itself for 12 bucks. So those are my general rules. I do well with them. I love Build-A-Bear. I've done well with them for years and I continue to. So here's another type of bear I really, really like. I love Boyd's Bears. Typically, Boyd's Bears will have a cardboard tag attached to them that will have their name with them. And they're almost always attached because the Boyd's Bears are more of a collector's item plush than a toy for kids. So they're usually kept very nice and they'll still have um, their clothes and they'll still have their tags with them. Unfortunately, Eudemia Q Quignapple did not but I was able to very easily find her. I just did a search on eBay for uh, 10 inch, Boyd's Bears 10 inch plush uh, plaid gingham dress and I found her. So this is Eudemia Q Quignapple. She is so cute. Look at her little outfit. I do leave the outfits on the Boyd's Bears because it's part of them. Um, their little out, their outfits are always part of like their character. They have names. They have um, series within the Boyd's Bears. Like they had like a wine series and I sold a bear that had like grapes on his shirt. But I always leave their clothes on them because they're part of their little personality or their character or the series they're in. Eudemia sold for 14 ups. I, nope, I took a best offer. Sorry guys, just took my notes. I took a best offer on Eudemia of $12 and she cost 50 cents. She shipped first class. 
And that was all of the plush for the week. So we're going to jump into some clothes real quick. And these are Seven for All Mankind men's jeans. Unfortunately for Seven for All Mankind, they have, um, they are a brand that has been raced to the bottom when people just continue to uh, list for that fast nickel and race to the bottom brands can unfortunately be entirely trashed. I remember when I could list seven for all mankind for 45 men's for 50 uh, years ago. And you can't really anymore. The Dojo jeans by seven for all mankind are still worth money. Those are a bolo. They'll have a big seven on the pocket and they'll say Dojo in the waistband here. So I'll still pick up Seven for All Mankind jeans. I like them as a bread and butter brand at the very least. Especially men's jeans. I like men's jeans than any brand. Men's shirts. Men's clothing in general. You can ask more money for it. Get less returns too. Uh, I accepted a best offer on these of 30. And they were um, from a startup box, if I remember correctly. So the cost of goods was around $1.75. They were also button fly. I do well with button fly jeans. I usually tack on a couple extra bucks for that, like it's a commodity. All right, next up we have, I wanted to show you a bundle we sold. This is a pair of Gap women's jeans. These are always skinny. They're orange. I found them for 99 cents. I picked them up. I love Gap. It's one of my favorite bread and butters. Always has on the tag for you, your keywords. Um, I pick them up in any size, any style. I really, really like Gap. They have a following and we do really well with them. I especially like them when they're different colored, if they have a print or if they're orange like this. So pick these up for 99 cents. And one buyer purchased those along with this pair of J. Crew Capri jeans. J. Crew is a good brand for Poshmark, but I don't like to just list things on one platform, like I said. So when I pick up J. Crew, I will list it on eBay and then cross post it to Poshmark. It's an okay kind of bread and buttery brand for eBay. It doesn't do that great. Still does pretty good on Poshmark. It's considered one of their preppy brands that they promote for some of their parties. Uh, the J. Crew folks that follow this brand and like this brand and wear this brand and shop this brand, I think are more on Poshmark than eBay, which is okay. Um, but I will cross post them because sometimes they'll sell on eBay. This is a pair that I dropped the price on and added shipping. So I had an $8 shipping charge on these J. Crew pants. And she bought both pairs, and I shipped them together in one padded flat, so I saved shipping on these, which was nice. Her all-in price for both pairs of jeans, uh, with her discounts for buying more than one item, was $34.74, which isn't that bad. Um, I like when people buy more than one thing, and you can ship them together. Next up, we have this Nike shirt. Um, this sold within like two days of being listed. I think it's because it's a double XL. You can see that up here. This came out of one of our wholesale lots. Its cost was about $275, uh, was what each item in that lot came out to. That wholesale lot had items that ranged from $12 um, all the way up to $40 and $50. So the cost of goods kind of averages out. Uh, this particular shirt sold really, really fast. I do believe. Like I said, it's the size. It's a Nike Golf standard fit, dry fit, which is a good solid bread and butter um, item to have. But I think the double XL helped. The thing is, is we tried to fix this photo because I know it looks horrible. You got like a space over here. You got the white in the back looks gray. It's not that bright. We tried um, with Photo Room and we tried with the eBay app. And what it was doing when it was taking out the background because it's so gray and there's gray stripes it was taking these stripes out of the shirt and like leaving just orange stripes with like blank area if you guys have ever seen when the remove the background like photo photo room and other apps when they mess up like that like if you have a white plush sometimes it'll take off its tail or one of its feet so we tried um, but it just took out the gray stripes and it left it looking really funky. So I was like, well, maybe we'll just pull it down and redo the photos. And then it sold for $15.99. Shipped first class. 
Next up, we have Paige Women's Capri Jeans. I love Paige. This is another really good brand. Used to be a bolo brand. Unfortunately, it's more of like a high, higher end bread and butter now. Um, some of the styles of Paige, some of them can go for $30, $35. These were Capri jeans. Capri jeans, I find, are always going to sell for about $5 or $10 less than your full-length jeans. There's less material. There's less pants there. Um, capris just sell for less money. But there are some page full-length jeans, like the Hidden Hills, the Hollywood Hills. They have different names that are typically right here on the tag. Um, right there for you. That's what they look like. Um, they can go for 30 to 35. This was a pair I dropped the price on and then added shipping in. So I had an $8 shipping charge on them. These sold all in $28.79. So almost $30 all in for a pair of Capris. So Paige is a good brand to look for. This particular pair uh, came out of a thread up. So they were about $1.75 cost of goods. They shipped it a pad of flat. Next up, we have Gloria Vanderbilt, solid bread and butter. This, again, is one of my favorite, my personal favorite bread, uh, bread and butters, but I have rules for Vanderbilt. I only pick up size 14 and larger, unless there's something unique about the jeans, if they were pinstriped or colored or something. This particular pair I got for 99 cents at the Goodwill. All-in price was $21.11. I did have shipping on these for the buyer to pay. And they shipped in a padded flat. They are size 14, straight leg, um, just plain old blue jeans. Love me some Vanderbilt. Here's another one of my favorite bread and butters, guys. Old Navy. I love Old Navy. Especially, again, with the men's jeans, you can ask for a little bit more and you can get a little bit more. These are men's size 32 by 30. They're just regular straight uh, mid-rise jeans. Let you guys see the photos here. These came out of a thread up box, so they were about $1.75 cost of goods. I always say about $1.75 for our thread up buys, depending on which lot it came in. And if I had a free shipping coupon, could be a little bit less than that, could be a little bit more. These sold for $25.99 and shipped in a padded flat. Next up, we have an American Eagle men's hoodie. This sold twice. Uh, it sold the first time, I believe, on a best offer of like maybe $18. Didn't fit, so the buyer returned it. This is heavy. This hoodie weighs over a pound on its own, so it shipped out in a padded flat. On our padded flat items, if we're offering free shipping, we do not do free returns. So the first buyer did pay to return this because it didn't fit. It came back. I um, played around with the photos, removed the background with Photo Room, brightened them up a little bit, made them a little bit wider, and raised the price up to uh, make up for the fact that we had a return, um, which is something that I typically do. When I relist something that comes back, I redo the photos if need be, or just uh, take out the background, double check keywords, um, and I'll raise the price up a little bit to make up for the fact that it probably had free shipping on it going out that I had to refund or whatever. So this went back up and sold within two days for $21.99. It is a men's hoodie. That makes a big difference. Again, men's will sell for more and sell faster. And typically you get less returns, but this did come back once. But it sold again. Very quickly, um, these men's American Eagle hoodies, we've only ever had a couple. This one came out of a wholesale lot. It's about two bucks. Uh, we found a couple in the wild before. We haven't really ever had that many of these, but they sell pretty fast. The women's will too, but they don't go for as much money, and they take just a little bit longer than the men's. The men's go really fast. The size extra large probably helped a little bit too. Next up, this is a brand of shorts that I used to absolutely love finding to flip. I used to find these at the Goodwill pre-COVID pre -COVID days for 99 cents. I used to find these at like every yard sale and garage sale and church sale around here. 
uh, a lot of times they would be part of a sale that was stuff a bag. So I could get like so many of these plus the other brands of men's shorts that I can do well with in bags and bags and just pay like maybe a quarter a pair, sometimes less if you counted how much stuff I could get in the bags. Um, I used to find these everywhere and um, we don't really go outsourcing that much since the shutdown. We do mostly wholesale now. I don't really get these in wholesale lots, but it is a coup. If you find men's a coup cargo shorts, I've always done really well with these. This pair is old, obviously, because like I said, we haven't gone out thrifting. Um, where I used to get these since before the shutdown. These fell off. So I know I mentioned this a couple of times already this year in these what sold videos, but it's super important that you guys are going through your inventory at the very least once a year. We do ours twice a year. We just pull our bins downstairs from our storage into our workroom where we do our work in the eBay room, we call it. We pull down one or two bins a day, once a year, twice a year, and go through them and just see if stuff's listed because stuff will fall off of eBay. There are gnomes that will eat your listings, guys. So we discovered these had fallen off. They were just sitting in inventory. If it's not listed, it can't sell, and you don't know if it fell off if you don't check your inventory. Got them back up. They sold for $23.21. They were $0.99. Cents. Um, I'm sure they would have sold much faster had we not, you know, had we seen that they fell off. Had we seen that they had fallen off sooner or had they not fallen off. This brand, I, I swear, just so, so good for me. I love this brand. All right. And they shipped um, padded flat. They, took, they tend to be heavy, though. All right, next up we have a pair of women's American Eagle jeans. These are the size zero skinny low rise super stretch. And this is what they look like. They're just American Eagle jeans. These came out of a thread up about $1.75 cost of goods. Sold for $20.99. And they shipped first class. And last but not least, we sold another pair of shoes. These are Anne Klein women's heels. They were suede and cute. I found them at the Goodwill. They were 99 cents, so I decided why not. Anne Klein is not that great of a brand, but they were different. They were cute. And I actually had two pairs of these. There was a purple pair and there was a pink pair, 99 cents each. The purple ones sold fairly quickly. The pink ones took a little bit longer. They were the exact same shoe, just different colors. So I'm sure they came from the same person. Anyway, 99 cents. And I accepted a best offer on these of $25. And they did ship first class. They did not weigh a pound. So what I did was wrap each shoe individually in its own piece of a bubble wrap. And then together in another piece then tissue paper, and then a large poly bag. And they still were like 13, 14 ounces, not that expensive to ship um, first class. And so the shipping was free. Cost of goods was 99 cents. All right, guys, so that's it for this week. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and let me know how things are going for you. Very important announcement. Keith and I are running a flash sale right now. It is only good through tonight, April 12th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. And here comes a train. Sorry, guys. So if you're watching this in the future, if you're not watching this on Monday, April 12th, when this video originally dropped, the flash sale will be over and is only going until 11.59 tonight. The sale is 50% off all of our guides and our training. And there is a code that you will need to enter at checkout that we sent out through our subscriber subscribers on our mail list. So if you're on our mailing list and you subscribe to that, check your email. The code will be there. If not, and you're in the Facebook group, there is an announcement pinned to the top of the group with the code in it. Uh, 
It has all of the links that you'll need to purchase the guides. It has a link to our website where you can read more about each guide uh, if you're kind of on the fence of whether or not you want to purchase them. So make sure you're a member of our group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. You can look for it on Facebook or use the link in the description box below. And you can get all of the links, the code, and everything you'll need from the group. And if you don't want to do that and you were part of our mailing list, you can check your email. If you're not a part of our mailing list and you'd like to be so that you get updated news of sales and events and news from the reselling world, go to flippinhippos.com. Flippinhippos.com. You can sign up for our mailing list there. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave, guys. Really helps the channel. And subscribe if you haven't. Hit the little bell so you're notified when I put out new content. And as always, guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and the support that you give our channel and our Facebook group. Y'all are the best. Bye.